What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the numbers. These are my DraftKings MMA picks for UFC Vegas 27. We have Cody Garbrandt going against Rob Font in what looks to be a pretty solid card, especially from a DraftKings perspective as well. We are back in the smaller cage, so really looking forward to it, hoping to make some money this week. I do want to shout out the winner from the contest last week. We had c 15 He won by uh, yeah less than a point, so shout out to him. If you can comment down your PayPal or Cash App, c I will get you your winnings. And I'll be doing more contests in the future. So before I get into the picks, if you guys can leave a like on the video and also subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, that would be much appreciated. Trying to reach 11K hopefully in the near future. But with all that out of the way, let's get started with the fight doesn't go to decision lines. So I think there's a couple sneaky fights to target. But these are the ones I'm going to be pretty heavy on. Starting with uh, Jared Van Derrick going against Justin Taffa. Heavyweight fight. There was a good chance it probably does end early. You have Taffa, who is 9,000. You have Vandera, who is 7,200. I can definitely see a finish either way. Vandera, 16 fights. He's pretty durable. He's only been knocked out one time. I think an interesting aspect of this fight is that he is a BJJ black belt. Maybe not the best BJJ black belt at all, but still, I've seen Taffa get taken down. He looks like a kind of a fish out of water on the mat. So if Vandera can go to that wrestling, I think he can have a lot of success. But on the feet... He's going to be at a pretty major disadvantage. I think Tafa is going to be the much faster striker, the harder hitter as well. But if Vendera can get on top, I do think a finish is possible. You're going to want to have both sides of this fight. I do see it finishing either way. I'd be pretty surprised if this fight did go to decision. Um, as you can see there, the line minus 325 for the fight doesn't go to decision. So I do expect this to end pretty early. Heavyweight fight, play both sides. Um, but I think the winner does have a good chance of finding that optimal lineup. Cody Garbrandt going against Rob Font. Minus 260 fight doesn't go to decision. So the interesting aspect of this fight is Rob Font has never been knocked out. Rob Font has even never been knocked down. 22 total fights. Cody Garbrandt, you know, pretty much the opposite. The guy has, you know, somewhat of a chin issue. He's been knocked out in all three of his losses. All three of those knockout losses coming in a row. He came back and looked okay. His last fight against Rafael, um, a Sun Sal. And I thought he looked pretty solid. I mean... Not much output, which is concerning. So I'm curious to see what kind of Cody Garbrandt we get in this fight. But I think he's always live for a knockout. The guy has a ton of power. But I think what it comes down to for me is going to be the chin and durability of both guys. And I do lean towards Rob Font. 8300 I like the price quite a bit. We'll talk about it more. But I like Rob Font quite a bit. But I will have some Cody Garbrandt as well. The dude has power in his hands. And he can finish pretty much anybody in the division. So another fight where I do want to have both sides. But the, the lean is, is strongly on the Font side. Edmund Shabazian going against Jack Hermanson here. Minus 205 fight doesn't get the decision. A fight that I'm going to have a ton of both sides. I think it goes one of two ways. Edmund Shabazian gets a first round KO. Jack Hermanson survives that first round and gets himself a finish himself with those takedowns. Um, he has a nasty grappling game. Great ground and pound. He's very dangerous on top. And if he can't get on top of Shabazian, I do think he'll have a lot of success. It's just he has to survive that early storm of Edmund Shabazian. So, I like both sides. Uh, Hermanson, 8,900, going to have quite a bit. Shabazian, 7,300, I think is one of the better dogs on the slate because he, he does have that first round upside. So, um, I'm going to be really high on that fight. Probably going to be my second highest exposed fight right behind the main event there. Then we have uh, Bruno Silva going against Victor Rodriguez. Another fight that I really do see finishing. Rodriguez has never been to a third round. Rodriguez has never been to a decision. I think Bruno Silva is definitely levels above here. He probably should get a finish. I'll sprinkle in a little bit of Rodriguez. I have seen Silva knocked out. I have seen Silva hurt. So a knockout, it could happen. But I think the more likely scenario is Silva getting him out of there within the first two rounds there. But yeah, going to have a lot of Silva. We'll talk about more of that um, as we go on. But I think Rodriguez, not the worst pump play in the world. If he does win, it's probably a first round knockout. Getting into the core plays, talked about him a little bit. Rob Font, 8,300. I love the volume. Average is about 5.21 significant strikes per minute. I love the reach advantage here. This is huge. Six-inch reach advantage for Rob Font in a fight where they're primarily going to be striking. I really don't see takedowns from either side. I think it would be wise for Cody to go for takedowns. It's just not something he really does. And as far as Font goes for takedowns, I, I maybe he'll try to get takedowns. I just don't see him having much success, so... In a fight where it is primarily going to play on the feet, I think that six-inch reach advantage is going to be huge. I think the volume is going to be huge. I think the durability is going to be huge. Can Cody be the first one to knock out Font? Sure he can, but um, I think Font definitely has the better chin in this matchup, and I think it's going to be a war. And I think Font does get it done by knockout here. So, going to have a ton of Font, 8,300. I will have some Garbrandt at 7,900 as well, but I'm more so on that Font side with the volume, 
the knockout upside, and I love that reach as well. Ben Rothwell, 9,200. Never thought I'd have him as a core play in 2021, but here we are. I mean, going against Chris Barnett, this is a fight where he should absolutely finish Chris Barnett. I know Ben Rothwell is 39 years old, but they're, they're just levels and levels apart um, skill-wise. Like, Rothwell should go out here and pretty much starch him in the first round. I'd be kind of shocked if he went to decision with Barnett. A decision could be possible, but Rothwell, you take a look at him, and when he, when he wins, he's finishing fights more often than not. Rothwell has a 90% finish rate, 58% by knockout, 32% by submission. I think a knockout or submission is definitely on the table. With Rothwell does choose to use his wrestling as grappling, I think it's going to be an instant submission. It's just we haven't seen him do that all that much as of late especially, but... Yeah, if he can get Barnett to the mat, which I, I do think he could fairly easy, I think a sub, you know, can happen extremely easy. It's just will he do that or not. But ultimately, I do think he can knock him out as well. So Ben Rothwell, he's 39 years old, but I think this is a matchup where he should absolutely get a finish, and it'd be kind of embarrassing if he didn't get a finish here. Jack Romanson, 8,900. I love the takedown upside. I love the finish upside. Um, Herm or Shabazian does have a 58% takedown defense. A lot of that coming in the Brunson fight, but still we've seen Brunson take him down. Hermanson is not the same caliber wrestler of a Brunson, but I do think Hermanson does have the better grappling um, by far. So yeah, Hermanson, what he has to do is survive that first round. I, I do think he goes to those takedowns early and often. He's not going to want to stand with Shabazian in that first round. At that point, he probably good chance he gets knocked out. But if he can get takedowns early, wear out Shabazian, I think a second round or third round finish is very likely for Hermanson. But with that said, on the flip side, you're going to want to have a ton of Shabazzian as well. I think this is a fight where you can really split your ownership. Um, I do like the price of Shabazzian quite a bit. I'll have a ton of him. But I think Hermanson has a ton of upside, especially with the new DraftKings scoring system that does favor the rest of grapplers. I think there's going to be a ton of takedowns if he does choose to use them. Tons of control time, and I think a finish is very likely on either side. So give me some Jack Hermanson, 8,900. And then Bruno Silva at 9,300. This is a fight where... Kind of like the Rothwell fight where I think both guys are just levels apart from each other. Victor Rodriguez coming from the Alaskan fight scene. He's getting finished by some very, very questionable guys. Saw him get submitted by a very questionable guy. Knocked out by a very questionable guy. Got knocked out um, in his last fight against Adrian Inez. No shame in that, but I think Silva has him covered pretty much everywhere. I think if he wants to take him down, I think it's a pretty easy submission. Bruno Silva, you know, black belt and BJJ. Great grappler. Great takedowns, great wrestling. I think he can take this down to the mat, get a sub. And even on the feet, I think he can knock out Victor Rodriguez as well. Um, but this is a fight you're going to want to have quite a bit of. I think it does finish early one way or another. But I'm strongly leaning towards Silva getting the done, getting it done probably in the first, if not that second round. All right. Uh, getting into our GPP plays here, our tournament plays. Justin Toffa, 9,000, heavyweight fight. Good chance it ends in the first round. So you got to play it. Um, you know, Tafa, tons of power. We have seen Vandera knocked out before. Very good chin, but still Tafa does crack pretty hard. If Vandera does not go to those takedowns, if Vandera does not get this down to the mat, I do think Tafa knocks him out. Um, so I'm going to have quite a bit of Tafa. I don't love the price, but if he does win, it, it's a good chance it's in that first round. So you kind of got to. Claudia Silva, 8,200. I'm not necessarily picking him to win here, but I do think he has first round submission upside. The only thing I don't like for Silva is Court McGee, you know, solid takedown defense. 28 fights has never been submitted. There could be a first for everything, but I also don't like that Silva is getting up there in age. 38 years old, about to be 39. Not a great sign there, but he has that one round of cardio, that one round of gas, and he might be able to get a finish in that first round. If he doesn't, he's in big trouble, but I will have some Silva just because he does have that first round upside. As far as McGee, like I said, I think he probably wins. I think he probably survives that first round, but I don't really see a scenario where Court McGee scores well this fight, so... The picks McGee from a you know a pick standpoint, but Silva got to have some for that first round upside. Felicia Spencer eight thousand seven hundred. This is very interesting here. Um, you know she has a ton of upside if she can go to the takedowns early and often, which I do think she does. I think they're grappling. Although Dumont is a brown belt, I think their grappling's on a different level from each other. I think Spencer's the much better grappler. I think she's the much better wrestler. I do expect her to get this fight down to the mat, kind of grind on Dumont, and I can actually see like a late finish as well. And just with the DraftKings scoring system, I think Spencer getting the takedowns, getting uh, I can see a lot of control time as well. I think it's going to be huge. I think Spencer is, I don't know, um, she could go overlooked or underlooked. Um, I don't think she's going to be like crazy high owned, but I think she has some serious, serious upside if she is able to get those takedowns, and I am leaning towards she does. So 
Going to have quite a bit of Spencer. There are some question marks with Dumont as a whole, question marks with Dumont's takedown defense and ground game, but um, I do think Spencer can have a lot of success. And then a Bill Algio, 8,500. This is a fight where I want to play both sides. I think this fight has sneaky potential to score really well just with the, you know, the fight style of Bill Algio. He lands nearly seven significant strikes per minute. Algio is very, very hittable as well. I think it's like a 38 or something like that percent take, 38% striking defense. The takedown defense isn't great as well. In three fights, he's been taken down like 10 or 11 times. So I think Ramos can have a lot of success here. But if if I think the winner of this fight scores well, I'll, I'll just say that. Um, Algio, keep it on the feet. You know, Ramos has been finished in all three of his losses. Algio black belt himself. So maybe Algio can catch him with something. But as a whole, I do think this fight scores fairly well i think there could be takedowns on either side and tons and tons and tons of volume on the algeo side so i don't hate algeo at 8500 all right getting into our live dogs edmund shabazian 7300 talked about him a little bit uh first round upside for shabazian he has finished i think like nine out of his 11 wins or or 10 out of his 11 wins in that first round nine of those coming by first round knockout so he's very very dangerous we have seen hermanson knocked out um, Hermanson's chin is definitely a question, so I think Shabazian's very live for that first round knockout. It's just the question marks of what happens if it does get out of that first round. But yeah, 7,300, I think, is going to be one of the more popular dogs on the slate, um, and for a very good reason. He's way too cheap here. He has that first round upside for a knockout, so I'm going to have quite a bit of Shabazian, quite a bit of this fight as a whole, but I do think this fight has a really good chance of finding the optimal lineup. Cody Garbrandt, 7,900. Um... Last fight was actually a concern for me. Like, he landed 19 strikes in 9 minutes and 59 seconds of fight time. Like, that's a concern if he's going to come in here. And I, I get it. Like, you've you got to kind of do that. you got to kind of knock it into a war. I, I get that. But it's not going to really score well for DraftKings if, say, Cody doesn't land anything for the first round, round and a half, two rounds. Um, he gets, like, a, a third-round knockout. Like, that's not going to score anything. So I'm not... Too sure how much Garbrandt I want to have. If I knew that Garbrandt was going to come out here, you know, get into a war, look for the kill, look for that first round knockout, I might be playing a little bit more of him, but I think he's going to be very high owned. So I, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, play a ton of Garbrandt this week. I think he's really reliant on that first or second round knockout. Um, if he's going to come out here and throw, you know, barely anything like he did last fight, I just don't see him scoring that well. And also Rob Font is going to have a six inch reach advantage. Rob Font has never been knocked out. There's a first for everything, but I, I don't know. But um, I do like Rob Font quite a bit. But I will I will play some Cody. I just don't want to go crazy on it, especially considering the ownership on him. But I, I don't hate it at 7,900. And then Carla Esparza, 7,600. Could be a really interesting sneaky play here. Going against Yan Shanon, who has been taken down before. She has been controlled. The only thing I don't like about Esparza is that when she gets those takedowns, she does absolutely nothing with them. Not many strikes landed, but she can get takedowns, control time, maybe squeak out a very close decision. I can see it happening, and maybe it's enough to get on the optimal lineup. I mean, it depends on the slate. I don't see her scoring like 90 points, 100 points, but I can see her scoring like 80, 85 points in a win um, for sure. So maybe I'll sprinkle in a little bit of Esparza. Just don't know, depending on what other, what else happens in the slate, if she will find the optimal lineup. But um, I'd rather be playing Esparza than the onside at 8,600. And then Ricardo Ramos, 7,700. Um, like I said, I think the winner of this fight scores pretty well. Algie has been taken down like 10 or 11 times in his three-fight sample. Ramos, very good grappler. I do think he has the grappling advantage. The only thing I don't like about Ramos is going to be the lack of volume. But he needs to really let his hands go in this fight. Algio can definitely be hit. Um, Algio, that 38% strike in defense. So I think Ramos can definitely have some success. I don't know if he finishes Algio. Algio has been submitted two times. I don't think Algio's ever been knocked out, maybe once. But... Um, I think Ramos, if he does get him to the mat, a submission could be possible. But ultimately, I do think this probably goes to decision. But even then, I think it scores very well. I like uh, the price range for both guys. Algeo, 8,500. Ramos, a pretty solid underdog play at 7,700. And I think the winner as a whole has a has a solid chance of finding the optimal lineup and a solid chance of finding it at pretty low ownership as well. Um, I do want to touch on, I think, another you know really sneaky fight to target is going to be that Demir Hadzovic and Yancy Madero's fight. I think it's going to be very, very low-owned. And I wouldn't be shocked if there was a finish either side. Both guys are very good finishers, and both guys can be finished. So I think the Madero's Hadzovic uh, fight is something to really take a look at if you're looking for like a low-owned fight to target. But we'll get into the pump play here. Jared Vandera, 7,200. 
heavyweight fight, which automatically you got to play both sides. But Vandera, I think he has a really significant advantage if he does get this fight down to the mat. I've seen Tafa taken down, and he has absolutely nothing to offer on his back. Vandera has some really, really good ground and bound. He's going to have a six inch reach advantage, a four inch height advantage. Black belt in BJJ. Um, so if he if he does get this down to the mat, I think he has a very good chance of winning and a very good chance of finishing as well. So I got to have some Vandera. 7,200. It's a heavyweight fight. Somebody probably gets finished in the first round. Round and a half. I'd be surprised if it got past that. But um, I don't hate Vandera as a nice pump play at 7,200. Anytime you can get a heavyweight fight, you probably got to play both sides um, no matter what. I mean, either guy can get a finish at any time. And then we'll get to the fade, which is going to be Janan Yan. Actually, I do think she'll get some pretty um, you know, decent ownership. It's not going to be crazy, but I do think she will get some ownership. I just don't see any reason to play her. She's a very, very high output, lands six and a half significant strikes per minute, but I do think she'll be on her back at some point. Um, I do think Esparza will have minutes of control time, and I do think Jan can, you know, still win the fight, but even then she's not going to get takedowns. She's not going to get control time, and she's not going to get a finish. So 8,600, 8, um, I just think there's a lot more better options than that. All right, so that's about it. Uh, always a good time to become a member of the Patreon and receive full access to my model at the premium projections, the new optimizer, GPP lineup percentages, DraftKings article, access to Discord, all that good stuff. I also added the advanced stats, um, courtesy of Uncle Weezy and the matchup template where we take the stats, put them together side to side so you can kind of look at the matchup and the stats all together. So lots of great stuff on there. Go check it out. $10 a month. I think, you know, the optimizer is worth that alone. $2.50 per week. And it really does help me um, you know, do new things like like bring on the optimizer, like bring in the new stats. So it really does help me out quite a bit to improve my product. So that's about it, guys. Good luck on UFC Vegas 27, and let's win some money. Let's get.